our most beloved ones on the path of illumination, seeking the higher knowledge that defines not only self as an equation of life, but also that which appears to be and is not, and that which is. As you realize that it is somewhat cloudy from time to time, the world of the real and the unreal, even within the precinct of your own mind, so you can understand, beloved, that an analysis of the international political scene must also take into account what is real and what is illusion, what is maya, and what is the point of the diamond. Thus you have come to Lake Titicaca, and now we come to Camelot, for we would speak to you of the strong delusion that is set forth and by which men and nations draw incorrect conclusions regarding the destiny of nations. Beloved hearts, our attention is on the Middle East, for it has been for longer than you realize, tens of thousands of years, the center of the cross currents of energies, the descent of extraterrestrials, and the laggard base for those who have come bringing a great weight to planet Earth. The instability of the entire continent of Africa is reminiscent also of the last days of Atlantis. Teeming life and yet very little of the Christ mind to hold the balance against forces that are on that are beyond the control of both the individual and the nations. One strong delusion is this that these forces in the Middle East can be controlled by anyone. You have had more than a hint in the past year that this nation's chief executive and representative bodies have not in any way been able to control Begin, Sharon, Arafat, and the rest. These prancing imps do what they will and it requires the Christed one strong and of good courage to subdue them. When men fear the loss of physical life or personal esteem, when they are vulnerable to manipulation blackmail or extortion, believe me, they do not act forthrightly. It would be a very simple matter, as we have said before, to withdraw aid from these nations, especially Israel. Why then is it not done? Is it merely because of the powerful Jewish lobby in this nation? I tell you, it is far greater than this, for as powerful as that lobby is, it still is not the controlling factor. You must realize that there is an illusion in the minds of people that Israel is the promised land and that ownership by the so-called Jews is by right, by prophecy. And therefore, in the name of the Old Testament, they consider it their manifest destiny to take not only that land, but surrounding lands. And thus, truly as they themselves have said, 
The Palestinians are the sickness of Israel. For to take life by the sword is to have life itself taken by the sword. And thus the dispossessed ones live as silent testimony to the misuse of power by the very ones who are outraged when power has been misused against them. You must realize that the supporting body of Christians believe the lie of the promised land and that the return to Israel is a cosmic destiny that must be supported by all of the wealth of this nation, by arms and technology, and even to allow nuclear weapons, though the eye must gaze in another direction while these things go on. You know very well that Jesus spoke in the book of Revelation of they which say they are Jews but are of the synagogue of Satan. This is true in every race. There are those who say they are Americans but they are of the synagogue of Satan. There are those who say they are Russian, but they too are of the synagogue of Satan. The seed of light, the seed of Joseph through Ephraim and Manasseh is surely sprinkled among all nations and even in Israel. But blessed hearts, the usurpers of the land of another people are not the ones to whom the promise was given. This is something which can no longer be overlooked because the very logic of the lie compels the people of this and other nations to do the bidding of Israel financially militarily and in every way. Beloved hearts, the momentum of these laggard evolutions, both Arab and Jew, Palestinian and Christian, black and white and Asian, settled in this area of the earth, presents the challenge of the millennia as to whether or not peace and life itself will continue on this planetary body. Wild threats and an immense desire for power. Realize then that when power was at their hand, OPEC would use the price of oil to nearly destroy the free economies of the earth. And now you must realize that with the sudden drop in the price of oil internationally, the balance of payments, the loans to third world nations become even more burdensome as they are not able to pay back their debts to the international banks. The sign of the descent of the price of oil must be noted by the soul your own soul. For you must realize that you have known for millennia that the manipulation of the oil and the wheat, commodities that are fundamental to life, would signal the beginning of the end of a world economy or even the beginning of world cataclysm. Much hangs in the balance. And we know what the violet flame can do. But as our messengers remarked in recent consultation with us, we could assign our troops worldwide to full-time round-the-clock decrees on Israel on the overlords of power and the murderers in the Middle East in every nation. 
and we would accomplish nothing else. What is the answer then? Shall a handful of light bearers use their hearts and voices 24 hours a day to hold back the onslaught of laggard world karma? There comes a time when the finger in the dike is no longer an applicable image. There comes a time when people must face world karma. And there comes a time when the light bearers must withdraw to build the alternate solution. I tell you, it is of great concern to us to consider the international balance of forces without the day-by-day -day intense decree sessions here in the city of the angels. For this is a focus of the world soul chakra, not only that of America, and therefore the wavelengths of your calls tie directly to that seventh ray chakra of all upon the earth. And you have seen miracles upon miracles and some which you have not even recognized as a result of the use of the science of the spoken word. The problem we face is an accountability on the part of those evolutions who do not pay as they go, who are not accountable, and who live off the light of others. Approximately $28 billion in handouts have been given to the state of Israel since her formation, giving an unrealistic image of accomplishment, responsibility, and competence in the government and its citizens. But this quantity of money covers over a multitude of problems and may give the appearance of accomplishment that would not otherwise be there. The absence of the Rock of David is apparent in some quarters, and the same idolatry whereby the people demanded a king in the hour of the prophet Samuel can be heard today as the people cry out for their king, Sharon. The idea, give us a king like the other nations, resulted in the installing of that one king, Saul, the watcher king, who therefore received the adulation of the people, but was the betrayer of Israel. The people preferred to live by the gods of their neighbors, then by the prophet incarnate in Saint Germain. Is it any wonder that the ascended masters take their leave of this octave, never to return in the flesh, save through their own chilas? We request that you open your eyes during our dictation. Thus, as we look today, we see very little change in the idolatrous consciousness, in the love of money and power, and in the ruthlessness to take from one's neighbors those things that do not belong and are not lawfully Israel. Neither do we see scruples on the part of the Arab nations, but they themselves, overcome by their greed, are not often capable of uniting on any one set purpose. And their hatred multiplied many times over is not a factor that lends itself to right solutions. 
with both sides maintaining the intensity of revenge. Our dictation to you today could easily have been spoken a decade ago and earlier for the same forces making the same demands with the same determination from subconscious levels are present yet they are better armed and they are more inclined to consider that that for which they have determined their existence is for is now subject to the whim subject to the idea that we have less and less to lose and this is another illusion that is present in world politics today and it increases daily it is the illusion of disintegration of non-concern of death everywhere of things falling apart in part this is not an illusion for there are great planetary changes taking place but the changes ought to be noted by the increase of light rather than the prevalence of death as death itself passes into the flame and is no more there is also a cynicism a despondency a hopelessness on the part of people even in America that their leaders simply are not able to manifest that character and purpose to unite the nation to stop the build-up of arms and to create a climate of peace and progress and a new spirit of destiny many millions of people today do not look to a future of brightness depression has become an international disease and much of this is because the lords of karma have determined to allow the life streams of the planet to outplay ultimately the subconscious let their hatreds be revealed let their murderous intent be shown let the whole world see what are the nations made of east and west this was a very clear manifestation in the case of the Beirut massacre as the revenge of Israelis was taken against the Palestinians by proxy of the Christian phalangists so they went through a process of self-evaluation and determined and indirect culpability on the part of Sharon and Begin and the generals who were present but we say from the level of the Lords of Karma the responsibility for the deaths of 700 plus or minus individuals was the direct and calculated responsibility of the Israelis who yet occupy Beirut to the present hour and these things ought not to be a feeble attempt to come to grips with this problem an offer on the part of the president to defend Israeli's borders is a sign of the illusion that somehow the Christed ones must mop up for the laggards and the arch deceivers how many months will it take before the world forgets the culpability of all of Israel in these matters it is a national consciousness that can stand and watch in the night the massacre of women and children that can hear their screams and do nothing and yet express 
the ultimate revenge against the Nazi overlords who themselves did persecute and kill Jews. This is selective justice. This is the concept of the tribe which says our flesh is better than your flesh. Our life is worth more than yours. We may kill you, but you may not kill us with impunity. Does the world close its eyes to this in the name of a coming Messiah or the second coming of Jesus Christ? We tell you it does. And many do not wish to grapple with the beast. They do not say with Mohandas, I will wrestle with the snake. Many are weary of the wrestling and they fear it. It would be unbelievable if it were not a daily occurrence that no one thus far has had the good courage or the strength to tackle and bind that Anthony Spilatro. Does it amaze you that an international gangster and murderer and that that archetype many times over runs loose as the people, quote, mind their own business, unquote. I tell you it is the Lord's business and the Lord who is Sanat Kumara have sent us the God and Goddess Meru to increase your illumination to the uttermost so that you may realize that when the lords of karma allow life waves to outplay themselves and the people see with their very eyes the contemptible state of consciousness and still do nothing, then heaven is concerned. Heaven is concerned. When in the face of evil, people say, there is no evil. Let us live and let live. This is far from our shores. Let us not be concerned. People wait with bated breath for an upswing in the economy so that they may have a return on their investment. They say they believe in the strong spirit of America and the rallying of this nation economically. Yet they close their eyes to the gods that manipulate the abundant life and to the very probability mathematically that this cannot continue. The money system has been manipulated and stretched to the utmost. There is only so much the violet flame can do to mop up the deeds of the fallen ones when in the next room they still grind out their worthless paper money. Our point is very simple. We must get to the cause and core behind the manifestation of world unrest. Some must understand, some must realize, some must see and be willing by the torch of illumination to penetrate the labyrinth in the astral and physical planes and in the mental belt of that consciousness which exists to take the light of the people and to turn it to darkness and death. We cannot use the violet flame merely as a band-aid to stop the fissure in the rock, to stop the cracks in the ceiling, or to keep out the flood in the basement. We must go to the core 
We must, no, we must go to the known individuals. We must be willing to expose. How long will it be before the children of the light themselves will follow the footsteps of the prophets of Israel and rend their garments and cry out in public demonstration against the outrage practiced upon the people. We have not recommended or called you to enact public demonstrations such as these, for we have far more valued your anonymity and your privacy to pursue the wondrous path of the science of the spoken word. For in itself, it is not a passive resistance. It is an active, sword-filled resistance that takes no life, injures no man, but is like steel in drawing the line of truth and error. There is no other sword that you can use but the pen that is mightier. But the sword that proceeds out of the mouth of the faithful and true must proceed out of your mouth. As the statement of truth, the exposure, the willingness to state such facts that in themselves these will arouse the enmity of nations. This is the only war we can justly recommend. No other will bring victory. The more exposure that you bring, the more you will find the need for the concentrated community of the Holy Spirit to be together. You have seen how the fallen ones fear the people in every age. The unique impression of some people in the world of this activity is that all of you are wonderful except the messengers. And therefore, you see, in a sense, you have little to fear. But on the other hand, when you become as outspoken and as determined in the drawing of the line of principle, you may have, as you already have, make a few enemies along the way. We perceive the day that must come shortly, when in every field, corruption, hypocrisy, the manipulation of the people must be exposed, whether in medicine and chiropractic, whether in the media, whether in the manipulation of basic commodities, line upon line, page upon page, book by book must come forth from our presses. And this is not enough, for you will see that you must carry the book to the hearts of the people. And then this will not be enough either because you must teach the people how to act on their knowledge of the truth. Thus, it is good that we may circulate again the teaching on the science of the spoken word. And the forbidden mysteries of Enoch itself is a formidable expose that causes the seed of the watchers to tremble, for they know who they are. You must realize that any enemy, when cornered, will strike. And that is to be expected. And this is no illusion. You must realize, therefore, that when you hurl the sword of truth of Pallas Athena into the world, you must be ready for the revenge, for the rage that returns to your doorstep. This is always our concern, for we do not like to see 
fragile souls whisked away by the winds of gossip and the poison of condemnation. And this takes place because the community itself has driven so hard against the entrenched forces of the earth. Often we spare you further exposés, for we would spare you the burden of your own action of decree work. But in this hour of the world political equation, we must say that there is a strong delusion in the Middle East and a strong delusion in the nation of China. Everywhere on earth, there are fallen ones in their 70s, in the final decades of their embodiments, who have already gone to seed, whose consciousness is not vital, not able to act in the name of the people, and yet they are everywhere in positions of power. You can see the signs of the dying race, yet they do not die easily, and their momentums linger on as ghosts of the night and specters of a history past. We are at an hour when there has not been a greater potential of cross currents of violence on the planet. Not in many centuries. You might say that the planet is a tinderbox, and without the decrees of the keepers of the flame, the igniting of that box might have already taken place. Some of these things we have said before, but it is, after all, February 1983. Our perception then is that until there is a national and an international awakening by the power of Shambhala and the Buddha, until there is greater enlightenment, there will not be the courage or the strength on the part of the people or the know-how for concerted action to remove the principalities of evil, and by this I mean the archetypes. We are not so much threatened by people as we are threatened by the patterns of the people. A certain image, which is not the image of Christ. People accept the fallen ones as their leaders because they have become accustomed at the soul level to have instant idolatry for the fallen angels who flaunt the law. These watchers, before they fell from their first estate, were in fact world teachers. They commanded the respect of life ways. And the people in their hearts have never confirmed the judgment of God or the pronouncement of Enoch. They have never been willing to let go and to say, these have fallen, they no longer have the right to rule us to take our light, our money, our blood, our children, our daughters, our sons. Until the people understand the need to confirm God's judgment, such as these, such as the Mafia, will still retain that somewhat fantastic fairy tale excitement. The people know, yet they know not what to do. They somehow do not understand the alchemical formula of summoning the within and the components of selfhood. They do not understand their inner strength or the source of their being. They do not understand the love that can bind a community such as this together and make it invulnerable impregnable to outer forces. They have not seen how the army of the Lord functions. Thus it is up to you to demonstrate more than by words, by deeds themselves. 
if professionals devoted to the concept of Israel could come from all over the world to till the land, to do menial tasks, to build their nation, can you not also learn to be farmers and ranchers, to take command of the land and to bring forth from the earth and from the elements the basic necessities of life so that the world economic picture holds no control over you. There are wondrous hearts in Israel who truly believe in the destiny of the promised land. Though their efforts may be misplaced, yet they rise as they balance karma and also are in a sense chilas of Moria, chilas of Abraham and Moses. The light bearers there believe what they believe because of this basic misinterpretation of the prophecy of the ancient texts. You know that the United States of America is the great gathering place of the twelve tribes. If the people who had put their labor in Israel had put it in the United States, had prepared the nation for the coming Messiah and not allowed the godless races to multiply in excessive numbers, which very process caused the sinking of Atlantis as the laggards were let into that continent and caused its sinking. So America today would have the benefit of the ingenuity and the skill as well as the wealth that has been poured into Israel. The Palestinians would have a home and the Jews themselves would have a much greater home of light. This mix-up in purpose and dedication has indeed resulted in an international crisis. You must understand the mind of an Israeli who cannot surmount the idea of threat to his homeland by Palestinians, whom he sees many times in the same image of the Canaanites whom Joshua was sent forth to confront. You can see how the interpretation of the Bible can make the best of men justify the worst of deeds especially when those men believe themselves a chosen and priority race and other races expendable. You can see how not more than a handful of misconceptions of the divine theology and the destiny of a group karma can cause untold bloodshed and the setback to the planetary plan. And the greatest illusion of all is the non-acceptance of the authority of the I Am Presence or of the prophets of Sanat Kumara or the truth of the ages distilled and separated out from illusion. The illusions of politics are scandalous to say the least. But the illusions of religion are even far worse. They are infamous and deadly, and they lead to the death of souls. Understanding, therefore, the challenges that beset us on every hand, we begin at the beginning with the most vital information in the divine sense of the knowledge of self of the I Am Presence and the Spoken Word. And then we move step by step to rid the earth of the lies of the sinister force. Every lie has been calculated, has been conceived in councils that have been carrying on the manipulation of the people for millions of years. 
One by one, as the people are free from the lie, they are free from superstition, they are free from fear, and they are free from world karma, which in the last days causes the division of households and families and churches and communities. I pray that you do not allow it to enter this company of light, for this is the bulwark of freedom. The ragtail band, nay, the remnant, the ensign of the people. Truly beloved hearts, we say from Lake Titicaca, love one another and let love be the message this weekend of the ascension of Lanello. Let love dissolve every lie and untruth and every illusion of human creation. For the tempters will come to tear you from the altar of the Most High God. This band ought to arrive intact at the place prepared and not be scattered ere the victory is seen. Oh, such a joyous day it is. The joy is this, that there is yet hope, for you have the means and the knowledge and the wherewithal of self-defense through the dynamic decree to deliver a message of tremendous impact and to be ready to thrust it home for the victory. Let us tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And let us see how Pallas Athena and the ascended masters will devise their ways and means of rendering the enemies of truth impotent in the day and the hour of victory. One by one, let us concentrate on the enemies of society and let us see how we, by our method of probe and penetration, of exposing the cause, the cure for the effect, can bring to the world an extended opportunity and a dispensation of once again staying the hand of world cataclysm. Let us see whether or not our plan for the enlightenment of the people can bring an action which can stop world calamity of every kind. Yes, the four horsemen are prophesied, but can we not head them off with oceans of violet flame? Are there not limitless angels to bind the demons of the deep? Only a worldwide response to the call of the Ascended Masters can answer these challenges victoriously. May your spirits increase. May there be a multiplication of your strength. Our strength is not in numbers, but when there are numbers in whom there is strength, then the multiplication factor occurs. We will make haste to prepare so that you will have a day and then another day to perform a mighty service for the Lord. Let us expose the illusion of any benign forces or benign intents toward the West through Red China. Let, ex let us expose the lie that does not allow this nation to support Taiwan in greater measure. And let us also expose the illusion that the Soviet Union is on its way out and all we need do is wait for the collapse of the system. This is wishful thinking. The beasts do not suddenly lie down and die. And their death throes may last centuries. No, 
we say only an active binding of those forces one by one through the exposés followed up by the dynamic decrees followed by concerted and even revolutionary action will make the difference as we look upon the last decade of the triumph of the ascended one and we see what has been done from inner levels we also draw the conclusion that on this entire planetary home no change toward the light has occurred unless the hearts of keepers of the flame have been engaged in the call unto the Lord therefore in some areas which have not been probed you see the mushrooming of the illusion the lie grows as a weed in the field wherever it is unchallenged let us take first things first and today that first thing on our agenda is the preservation of the life the integrity and the mission of this organization and every member in it you have laid down your lives many times over for the world and for the conditions of the nations now we say take care take care of your own circle and establish the place prepared so that you are not vulnerable in the day when the sleeping serpents are all awake and know the source of the ultimate light yes you must give your energy on this very 10 o'clock line of Lanello's attainment to an enlightened self-interest which is not a fear or an over concern of the human ego but rather the realization that a place must be established for the habitation of the Lord even your I am presence and Christ self and that you need space open space that the light of your Christhood might appear and flourish in full glory without bumping in to the force fields of cities and neighbors so close as to stifle the sweetest hearts that we know therefore you see because we know we must recommend this one pointed action for the establishment of the inner retreat and our ranch we also calculate that the forces of illusion may also for a time seem to increase our prayer is that the people will read and read correctly the handwriting on the wall as each nation reveals itself and as the leaders who are not the Christed ones expose themselves may your perpetual prayer be that the people will see and have the courage to be and to act In the name of Saint Germain, we keep the flame of Lake Titicaca. And in the light of Lanello, we extend illumination. Illumination that will enhance your assimilation of his initiation of the past 24 hours. Illumination is surely the key. Let it be defended by truth and the power of the legions of the Lord's host let the saints robed in white who wait on the etheric plane be encouraged and let our people of Poland and Czechoslovakia and Romania and Yugoslavia let the light bearers of Eastern Europe and Mother Russia know in their hearts that hope lives this day for we understand how hope can sometimes be a flickering flame 
but in this hour we fan the flame of hope by illumination. O Serapis Bay, send thy image of the ascending ones to the hearts of the courageous everywhere. We keep the flame, we love, we hold you now in the hour of victory. Peace forever, for Gautama is with us, beloved. Light from the central sun, I beseech thee, manifest now that ray of light destined by Alpha and Omega to touch the earth in this hour. I come in the power of the three times three and all multiples of the nine become the action of the lowering of my own blue causal body from the level of the I am presence one from the level of the Christ self one from the level of your heart one therefore by the power of the three spheres of blue flyer Three spheres of blue fire I am come. Therefore recognize that that which is above can be magnetized below. And you may begin with a sphere of blue fire visualization in your heart the size of a quarter. And there visualize the intensity of blue fire burning actively. See the intense blue of the will of God and see how it is a living flame and how by your love of that will and of the author of that will it will expand of itself. For you cannot expand a flame or a sphere or a light. But the light itself is God activated by devotion it will expand in the name I am that I am thus there is present with you now beloved by the action of my own attainment a sphere of blue that is commensurate with your own causal body as I add the momentum of mine for the effective release of the will of God to earth and her evolutions. There is with you now a sphere of blue that surrounds the Christ self. And you in your heart, with the beginning of the blue fire, must intensify until the upper spheres descend. And the descent will produce an action in you of the Father and the Son and it will also manifest as three in one and three in alignment as three giant beads of light. Beloved, when the fire does expand in this octave as the equivalent of that which is above, you will know the meaning of the old power in heaven manifest on earth. Think not that this will occur lightly or without diligent pursuit. Love will magnetize the flame. Wisdom will seal it. Power will expand it walking the path with diligence 
will sustain it. Thus, my beloved, I place around you the pattern of the blue sphere that is to be. It is an outline to be filled in, something to work toward. I have been asked by the lords of karma to represent the four and twenty elders and our beloved Alpha in a release this night which is of momentous import to planetary cycles. I charge you then to receive my message and hold it inviolate in your heart. For in the message is also the transfer of the electrode, the coding of the message itself, of that which must come to pass on earth. Therefore approaching now out of the skies comes the one known as the deaf angel and this one, as an emissary of Alpha, comes on a matter of import, a weighty mission, carrying the book of the law, whereon there are written certain names inscribed thereon by beloved Alpha. This dispensation, in answer to the call of the entire Great White Brotherhood. Thus it is that the Death Angel brings to certain individuals upon Earth the plague of their own karma, their own deceit, the plague upon their own house of their hate and hate creation directed against Saint Germain and his representatives on earth. Therefore, the death angel will pass over those houses where the name I am that I am is inscribed in the heart and the blood of Christ on the door. And the Lord, our righteousness, prevails. This plague individually delivered is the action of the selective and discriminatory judgment of the lords of karma, of Alpha and Omega that can only manifest because the cosmic Christ, Lord Maitreya, is effectively working with these evolutions through your own messenger's heart and through your own hearts, blessed disciples of the word. Therefore, the purpose of this dispensation is for the shortening of the days of the elect. It is for the binding of certain of the fallen ones, most notably those who have acted against the light to prevent the outworking of the activity of the great white brotherhood. And as they have railed their accusations against the light bearers in every nation, so they will now come to grips with their own returning karma thrust upon them. And it is the pouring out of the individual vial of the last plagues of their own life stream. To their doorstep is delivered this night Therefore, that substance that will be upon them for the trying of those works that are not of God, you need only read the prophecies written in the book of Revelation itself. And you may wonder and consider the meaning of the four horsemen and the one whose name is death. For the death of death itself must come to pass, the death of the dead egos and of the dying race, and those who stand in the way 
of the victory of the light. But this, beloved, is not something meted out upon the individual from without. It is merely the turning again unto the individual of all that he has sent forth. As the death vibration upon earth. This is a weighty matter of the law, and I can assure you that in the fulfillment of the cycles preordained, there is the faculty of judgment and discrimination that is exercised by all of the Lord's hosts who have to do with the evolutions of Earth. Alpha and Omega, Sanat Kumara, Gautama Buddha and Maitreya, Jesus and Kuthumi, the Lords of Karma, the Four and Twenty Elders, and Helios and Vesta. The Christ selves of the Light Bearers Understand the meaning of this turning of worlds, for this is the beginning of a series of events which must come to pass by the action of mercy for the saving of the holy innocence and the ongoingness of eternal life. Release then, O oh God, for all is set and we are ready and the mighty spheres are in place. Therefore descend, O light. Let the word of Alpha descend. Let the judgment pass down the crystal cord of the saints on earth. Let it go forth from their hearts. Let the mighty blue sphere multiply now that which must be increased and let it reduce that which must be decreased. I am the great divine director by the causal body of my life there is released to earth the giant sphere of blue surrounding the entire planet and within that sphere there are grids and force fields through which the delivery of the judgment shall pass. And the person of the death angel is assisted by many who form the bands of this Holy One of God. For that which is unreal is swallowed up by life that is unreal. And error is consumed by truth and mindlessness by the mind of God carelessness by the love of purity in action. Therefore the mighty angel and his legions bear the light that swallows up the darkness, bear the light that turns the darkness into itself, and that identity which does not separate from it will also be consumed. Blessed ones, let the earth therefore prepare, for the word of God is nigh, sharper than the two-edged sword. It will not be turned back, and therefore advance teams of angels have already stood next to those numbered in the book of life by Alpha, and they are already bound lest they attempt their escape ere the moment of the coming of this wondrous angel. Now you may behold the wonder in heaven as the stars fall from their habitations. And as these fallen angels are removed from their citadels of power, no longer shining in the firmament of world consciousness, and you will also see that as some descend, so the real sons of God will ascend and come to the fore of life. It is as though the great white brotherhood had determined to take possession of earth. 
and the old flag comes down and the new glory is raised and the banner of Maitreya is seen and though it is yet the night of the emptying of the vial yet there is a glimmer of starlight of those who are the fixed sons of heaven who radiate a penetrating light of illumination's joy to those who are the receivers of the light of Alpha and hold the balance in the physical octave for the Lord's judgments which must come to pass whenever Christ walks the earth in the physical dimension let those who have ears to hear and eyes to see see and those who do not suffer loss therefore is the Lord satisfied therefore is the desiring of God manifest and therefore is hope in heaven translated to earth as the beginning of the ending of the cycles of death is seen from above from beneath and in the center of the hearts of God's will this action beloved ones is one that has been taken on other systems of worlds for the deliverance of the people from the outrage of the fallen ones and the demons incarnate now in the name of Helios and Vesta I say earth is sealed in the word of God and his word shall not be turned back and his judgments are mighty to behold merciful righteous and filled with the honor of God love then fulfills the law love it is that descends upon all love then is the moving in of the Lord's host in the beauty of the light of God I desire to transfer to you then the communion cup and wafer that your chakra of the solar plexus might be sealed and that you might carry for all light bearers the sign of the living bread of life come down from heaven and the cup of the wine in the soul chakra as the sign of those who endure by the blood of Christ I would that all the communion preparations be brought to the altar. Mighty victory, mighty victory, hold the balance of the golden flame for earth. Jophiel, angels of white illumined by the flame of the heart of Lanto and Confucius legions of Sanat Kumara hold then the earth in the embrace of God as the alchemy of the melting of the elements with a fervent heat will surely come to pass and those individuals for whom life was a charmed existence yesterday will soon know the wages of sin and that which they have put forth energy that belongs to them that must be returned Lord Shiva by the power of Brahma and Vishnu let the whirling star now be manifest. Let the whirling star of light bind wormwood, bind wormwood, bind wormwood. Blaze the light of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and Mother 
O word of the infinite, O Brahman, I am that I am. I am that I am, 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 I am. It is done. It is done. It is done. Are the preparations ready? They are all to be brought to the altar before Shiva. May we have many volunteers to carry all of the wine and the bread. Let us give the call to the fire breath. I am, I am, I am the fire breath of God. By the full power of the light that I am, by the grace of God of my heart, I transfer now the ray of Alpha and Omega in this bread and in this wine. Lo, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. I am the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. 
Lo, I am the Word incarnate. Lo, I am that I am the threefold flame of Shambhala. Lo, I am that I am. Lo, I am the mighty I am presence. Lo, I am the Christ self. Lo, I am the pure heart of the disciple on earth, of the servant of the Most High God. Lo, I am that I am the Word of God. Lo, I transfer the essence of my body and my blood. I transfer the essence of all that I am and charge now by the full power and authority of my causal body of light. This bread and this wine with the vibratory action of Alpha and Omega and of the presence of Christ in the very midst of death and hell for the judgment pronounced by Alpha and Omega. Let the vibration of this judgment be carried now by the light bearers as the living bread sealing now the solar plexus, as the wine sealing the seat of the soul chakra. According to the will I am that I am, according to the wisdom I am that I am, According to the love I am that I am, let the light descend for the victory of the flame. In the name of the entire spirit of the great white brotherhood, I am that I am Maitreya, I am that I am Maitreya, I am that I am Maitreya. The bearers of the wine and the bread will serve communion now at three stations, at the center aisle and in front of, in front of Kathumi and El Moria. Now it is the request of the great divine director that you fast until the breaking of your fast at breakfast so that your four lower bodies may assimilate the charge placed upon the wafer and the wine. So you should partake of nothing more than water following this service and not too much water. We do not wish to dilute the essence. You are carrying the entire vibration of this message and judgment from Alpha in your body and specifically in the solar plexus and seat of the soul chakras, which is the place the level of vibration on the planet where the karma of the fallen ones has been made and therefore we must descend to the place of the crime for those individuals to receive the judgment even as the death angel descends to that level of where the individuals are he goes to them personally so by sustaining the bread and the wine in the solar plexus and the seat of the soul chakra, you also travel to that same level. As we come forth to receive this body and blood of Christ, let us sing perpetually the song to the great divine director with which we began. Let us open all the doors to the temple. All who can walk of their own accord may receive communion. I'm referring to babies that must be carried. They do not receive communion if we have anyone who is an adult who is crippled, you may of course be brought in, but the child must have to walk to the altar on his own and accept communion by free will. 
without being forced. And he should be taught by his parent, guardian, or teacher what is the full import of the body and blood of Christ in the ritual. Let us begin. Because of the flame in good standing who are not in attendance tonight, will have till midnight tomorrow to come to the sanctuary, hear the dictation, and receive the same communion, which will be here until midnight Monday, Monday night.
within one's members, within the community, within the world body. So the sword of truth divides the real from the unreal, those who are from above and those who are from beneath. Wherefore is the separation begun? Therefore some are taken and some are left, and some are cast into outer darkness, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I am the great divine director, and those who question my coming or my instrument have but to study the prophecy of the living word in every age. For the line is drawn and it is true, and the plumb line of truth is true, and the holy kumaras are true, and God with you is true, and your mighty iron presence is true. Therefore the light is gone forth, therefore is the word spoken, therefore is the action complete, and the spiral will fulfill itself. And there shall be whole, a faint glimmer of the new day, which shall become the full of sun, when the succession of such dispensations has been completed by the hand of Alpha, by the hand of Omega, in the name I am that I am the great divine director, be sealed in the sphere of blue, in the heart of God, in the heart of Christ, and in the heart of you, I am that I am. I am that divine direction for the fulfillment of the divine plan of life, of life, of life, not death, find death and hell. Let it be reduced by that percentage known to the Lord God. Let its momentum be reduced. Let its power be reduced. For the fire of the hearts of the saints does reduce it on earth. Therefore it is done. Therefore it is sealed. And therefore the word does descend even more deeply into the earth. As the well driller drills his well, so does the word of God bore deeply into the earth where none can escape. In the caverns and the canyons of the deep, none shall stay the hand of the Lord God and his angel this night. For I am the great divine director, servant of the Most High God, and you are the sons of God incarnate. You are the children of the light. You are the angels of the Lord in embodiment. And therefore, you are, I am that I am. I am that which you are. I am the infinite light of the sun, and we are one as above, so we know. Let the oneness of the union appear and let the light be fulfilled according to the calling of the Most High. Amen. Amen.
Let us sing now to the fiery destiny of the threefold flame of the heart, becoming the living sun of Helios and Vesta. Out of the one flame comes the twin flames of eternal love, of Alpha and Omega, of the twin causal bodies of you and your beloved twin flame. We sing the song of the new day. We sing to Helios and Vesta, and as we send them our love, on the return current there is the descent of that Son of God in our hearts to expand the sacred fire that is for the holding of the balance for the dispensation of the great divine director. Here on the 10 o'clock line of the day, we keep the flame of the priests and priestesses of Lemuria, of the sacred fire that fulfills all of the law below as above.
I am reminded of the first vow of the holy angels sent by God to be teachers of his children newborn. I am reminded of other vows taken and of other vows also broken for those holy watchers who lost their first estate did so by the breaking of the trust of the office of world teacher. Therefore it remained for the Son of God to descend even to the lowliest state of the flesh, there to redeem that which had been lost by the betrayal of those who were to be the guardians of the flame of the I Am race. This very flame that you hold is ever the symbol of the flame of the heart and because the flame of the heart of Gautama and his messengers on earth still burns with the intensity of love, so the angels of God who have not lost their first estate may descend to the level of the keeper of the flame. For the flame is God and where God is, there the angels may dwell. See then how the neglect of the flame on the part of some among mankind resulted in a planetary blackout and therefore the loss of opportunity for the light from on high to descend. I came because, beloved, the geometry of my own causal body and the fire aglow in my heart measured sufficient to be the single flame on behalf of the entire life wave. The flame must keep the life of all. Are you ready for the moment when the single fire of your heart will be called upon to keep the light of a world? Yes. Have you ever contemplated such a mission and a calling? Beloved ones, beloved ones realize that this requires many, many cycles of internalization of the word. Some among you can scarcely maintain the light for one temple your own. Some of you yet need the reinforcement of the thread of light from Gautama Buddha to keep your own flame burning sufficiently to be bright in the presence of personal karma and when that karma becomes too burdensome it is necessary that another in embodiment so keep that flame for you this is the understanding and the purpose of the incarnate word that some have increased so many layers of darkness in the planes of being, that that which they are able to draw forth